Hey there, welcome to Bandit's Keep. I'm Daniel and we are continuing our Mega Dungeon build. So in this video we're going to actually start working on the map for level 1. You guys had voted and decided that you wanted to have level 1 be kind of tricks and traps and stuff, so we made some of those last time and we're going to add some more this time. And we're going to start uh, sketching this out, but there's a couple things I want to talk about first. Uh, let me see if I can show you my screen here. There we go. Okay, this is the sample dungeon from original Dungeons and Dragons. This is the one the guy kind of puts out there as the, hey, this is how you should build your dungeon. And one thing I want you to notice is that it's not that big, right? This is a level of a dungeon, I should say. So it's mega dungeon, right? It's pretty small. And one thing to keep in mind is that when they say, oh, you got to make a lot of levels or whatever, or you know, to get your mega dungeon going, each level does not need to be super sprawling. There doesn't need to be a hundred rooms on every level of a mega dungeon. I think that that's maybe what a lot of people do these days, but that's not how I built a mega dungeon. We need it to be interesting enough to keep the, to have enough challenge for them to get through it, but we also do, can always build on it. And I think that's the key to anyways one of these mythic underworld mega dungeons. Like if I'm looking at this level here, like I see lots of empty space, which means that later on, and I think, again, I'm not a historian, but from things I've read, it seemed like Gygax added stuff, you know? So like you might run this dungeon for a while, and maybe the players are, are often going down this area number four, I don't know what that is, uh, and then one day you just add a door and then you're like, what? Or a secret door they find or they or the wall collapsed and there's another section of the dungeon there. So we're going to leave empty space. We're going to kind of map it out and start a beginning and we're going to make this thing grow as we play. That's kind of our overall plan. By the way, if you want to know more about this particular Mega Dungeon, this YouTube channel right here, Adventure Review, is really great. I think I love the way he breaks down the modules. So um Produce more. No, uh, I watched them all. Um, but he does, the very first one he does is the first dungeon, which is, uh, you know, down here at the bottom. So go ahead and watch that if you want to know more about that one in particular. But I do want to show you one other thing, which is, Dragex talks about how dungeons should be set up, you know, cross sections. And we can see here that he's got, uh, you know, his first level, then he's got two parts to the second level, right? And the third level is kind of big and sprawling, then fourth level is broken down, fifth level, and he's got five and a half, and five and the third, then six is here. So basically what we're looking at is the idea that the level could be multiple parts, and that's exactly what we're going to do here. So let me close this for now. What we're going to do is we are going to create the main section. If you watched the last video, and if you didn't, I'll tell you now, um, there's actually going to be kind of four sections to level one. Uh, the first section is the part we're going to mostly focus on today, which is the tricks and traps kind of main part of the dungeon, the part where most adventurers enter and die. There's going to be a, a second part that's like a labyrinth that's going to be magical, which is actually one of our uh, special areas. Then there's going to be a part that is basically a spider area that nobody goes into because it's super, super dangerous, and eventually the party will venture there. And then the other part that I don't think I really talked about last time, but I'm going to have, is there's going to be another entrance to the dungeon a little bit of a distance away that's going to be uh, some kind of a lair of humanoids, orcs or goblins or something. I'm not sure exactly what yet. Um, maybe bugbears. I like bugbears. But anyways, it's going to be another way into the dungeon, and it's going to be um, more of a kind of a traditional, you go there and you can fight some bad guys, or maybe get them on your side. And another thing, too, is that, talking about the cross-section, is we're going to have, so I, I quickly wrote out, again, I'm not, when I make a dungeon for myself, which is kind of how I'm doing this here, um, although I will make it available, but people ask me, uh, I don't fully write out every detail of everything. I kind of give myself an idea because I want to kind of go with the flow. You know, I don't need to write, like, how many pebbles there are in the, in, on the floor. You know, it's like that, that stuff is you can make up as you go. But one thing I do want to know is where this place is. So it is situated in, in uh, a rundown destroyed keep that's that basically this town ship found after they established themselves here. So it's super, super old. Um, it's kind of on a hill. There's some forest around it. There is kind of a path from all the adventurers that go in and hardly ever come out. Um, and kind of off the main route to get to it. So, you know, it, it's well known. People know where it is. But the lair where the uh, humanoids are going to be is going to be relatively unknown. And um, the other thing with the spiders are too, that'll probably be another entrance into the level as well. So there's going to be, I might add even another entrance if I can, because it's always good to have more than one entrance. Um, but for the most part, our entrance is going to be in the center of this ruin. Um, the ruin itself is going to be patrolled by wild animals and stuff, but people do set up tents there and camp. So... Um, you know, it just adds another level of uh, complexity. So the you will, your PCs won't be too tempted to just keep running out of dungeons and setting up camp right at the mouth of it. There's chances they could, you know, run into trouble if they do that. But sometimes it's worth it, right? So anyways, let's get to it, right? Okay, so a couple things. Let me get my screen here. All right. So 
I added a couple things. I added that environment thing that I just told you. Um, the other thing I added as well is I wanted to, if you remember from the last video, I made this room that um, has the magic mirror in it. Um, where it's broken and if they find the pieces of the mirror and they put it together, they'll make a passageway down to, to whatever level we haven't decided yet. Um, I decided that I'm gonna put it somewhere really obvious at the beginning, I said that before. I wanna put it near the beginning, but I also don't want uh, it to be too obvious, so I'm gonna make it behind a secret door. So I think what I'm going to do is, and I added this, that I'm going to give a chance that every time that the party enters the dungeon, I mean, not walks out and walks back in obviously, but you know, for a day, there will be a chance, one in ten is what I decided on, that there's just going to be a dead body in this door. Because remember, I keep saying this, but it's important, in this particular dungeon, this is a place that people go to adventure. So there, a lot of this first level is going to be finding other adventurers and dead bodies, basically. And the adventures won't always be, you know, humans and halflings and whatever. I mean, they might be, you know, a dwarf. Uh, dwarfs. I'm making dwarfs like that. They might be orcs or something, uh, you know, whatever. That, you know, depending on your campaign world, how you want to do. Anyways... Let's get to drawing the map. So one thing I'm doing here is I've got... Um, oh, we're going to see if the, how this works. I've got uh, the my iPad set up, and, uh, and in theory, well, I'm going to be able to draw on it, and you'll see it on the screen. So we'll see. Let me know how you like that. But what I'm going to do before I do that is I want to start here. Um, this is the Dungeon Master's Guide, first edition. Which, by the way, if you just want to create a dungeon from scratch, this this section, Appendix A, is, is actually great. But at the beginning of Appendix A, there's a, uh, a set of sample kind of starting areas. And then you can roll to see like how long hallways are. So if you don't feel comfortable just creating your own dungeon, you could randomize it using that. But what I did was I used just that. So let's see if we can do this. So I rolled randomly. Oops, not there. So I did something wrong. There we go. I rolled randomly and got this one as my starting point. So already we have a lot to work with, right? We've got stairs coming down and... Uh, We've got, uh, I can put a point over it. Is that pointing? Oh no, I'm pointing there. So I'd have to point there. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, so we have stairs going down and then we've got, you know, some chambers. Now, if you notice, there is a door right there next to the stairs. That is where I'm gonna put that special room. So I decided that once I started, I'm like, hmm. Okay, so I'm using Procreate. I'm just gonna, let me go in here with my eraser. Uh, again, I'm not a, 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 a uh, I'm not a cartographer, um, so this is probably not going to be the, the neatest dungeon you've ever seen. But um, So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to have those stairs, and then I'm going to put the secret door here. Okay, and that secret door is going to lead to this chamber with the mirror. You know, and, and I think, I don't want it to be too small, because I also feel like this is a kind of place where the party might be able to camp out, right? And also the way I described it was secret changer, uh, blah, 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 blah. Secret chamber, arcane writing on the walls, rotted and destroyed furniture. Against one wall is a large mirror that has shattered pieces laying on the ground. Now, the reason why, again, I'm putting it so close to the entrance is because if this was the, the basement of some kind of a keep at first, it's going to start off relatively structured, and this wizard or whatever probably, you know, uh, would want to put their, their, their elevator as it would be so close. So... I lost the camera there for a second. Um, so what we're going to do is... Uh, See if that keeps happening. We're going to draw this out. I'm going to make it, you can't see, but there is actually a grid on, on this. So I'm going to just go and make it a 30 foot square. Like that. Cool. All right. And this is going to be, now I'm going to, and everybody's area. So I'm going to make this area one because that's my first area. Now I'm going to come up to my, actually, I'm going to do this. Yeah, there we go. I know it's a little messy, but okay, so that's area one, and I'm going to come over here in this room with the strange circle engraved on the floor. Nope, the secret chamber, arcane writing, is number one, so I'm going to go room one. And this is the secret chamber. And what I'm going to do is, oh, I already started to write. Oh, actually, I guess room one is technically this. So let me, let me fix that. So this is actually room one, right, because this is the entrance. So this is going to be... Room two. Okay. Alright, so room one is the entrance. You know. Entrance to the dungeon. Uh, to the dungeon uh, is through a set of ancient stone stairs. Now, 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a lead from Gygax in his dungeon because what he did was, I'm not going to pull it up again, but like he has these whole areas. Like there's a whole area that's called like one, and it's basically a bunch of these areas that are interconnected that have one theme. So like this whole area is one. So when I'm describing it, the hallways, etc., that's all going to be part of room one. You know, so it's not that, and then I have to describe each hallway separately. So that's one. Room two is this one, right? It's right next to the stairs, right? So basically, if they have, the, if they look for it, um, or if there is the there's that one in ten chance that there's a dead body stuck in it, they will find this secret chamber. They'll know it's there for the future, and they'll be able to use the magic mirror once they find the pieces, which I'm going to. Um, connect other places. So what I have to remember to do now is put pieces of magic mirror places, right? You could do that a lot of ways. You could make it random, but I think for now we're going to try to make it uh, kind of uh, kind of set. Okay, another thing I want to do is I want to set up an area right at the very beginning that feels like somewhat comfortable for them to, to uh, rest in. Um, and it'll be, again, another place where people may have come down into the dungeon the rest. So um, I'm going to actually put it off to one side here. I'm going to go over here a little bit. And again, I want to leave space because uh, in a lot of these places, because again, I might want to add rooms. So for now, I'm just going to make this a, we're going to say this was probably some kind of a holding cell. So I'm going to make it relatively long. So we'll say 50 feet long by, by 20 foot. I'm doing 10 foot squares here. I know you can't see the squares, but okay. And this, this room here, is going to have a porculus, right? It's going to be, um, this is a new room, by the way. So clearly I'm going to have to write it up a little bit. So what I'm doing here is I'm just making cells. Yeah, you can see that. I know it's a little messy with the, so this is going to be room three. Okay. So let me write this guy up. So room three, okay. Entrance is partially blocked by a rusted and stuck port because only two feet of space below. Okay, that way they can, again, this creates some kind of security for them, right? Um, inside the room is a series of cells all with rusted gates no longer able to be locked. All right, and this room right here is gonna be fairly safe, right? Because they can come into this room and if they can figure out a way to do it, they can create a space here. They can also imprison things here, right? The locks don't work, but they can figure, bring chain, whatever. Again, opening up the idea that the players can figure something out. And this might be one of those areas that later on we can add um, additional ways to come in and out of it. Okay, so I definitely want to have that near the beginning. Okay, so now, again, we've got our wire road entrance here. And the way I do this, guys, is I'm just working my way up these things that we did. Okay, we wanted a pit, tra pit, pit trap sprung long ago. Spring. I wrote spring, so sprung. Sprung long ago. Uh, rusted spikes at the bottom. Okay, so this is basically a, a kind of a standard trap. I'm going to put this in the other direction. And one thing we want to keep in mind a little bit as, as, as we're creating this dungeon is it depends on the addition that you're running. It, it, for your people, your your sources of light, right? I typically like to make my corridors either really kind of short with lots of turns so they can't see past or some long ones where their light source doesn't reach all the way, right? Because then that creates situations where they have to kind of figure out a way they can see further down before they decide to walk down this corridor, right? So in this case... You know, if they're standing at the staircase, I'm like about 60 feet, which is pretty much the limit of infrared vision in, in most cases. So this pit will be kind of just out of their range of view. It's going to be right here. And this is actually going to be, well, it's not a room, but it's going to be number four. 
and then past it will be more, you know, more, more dungeon basically. So let's go over here. So maybe instead of writing rooms, I should write area because area makes more sense, right? And again, right now, I find that if I spend a lot of time like try to work out all these little bits and pieces of detail about uh, the rooms, then it takes me away from the overall scheme. So I'm really just making, like again, quick notes here. I, I know, um, and again, this needed to be close to the entrance, because if you, if you remember, or if you look at it now, it specifies that there's a chance that there's an adventurer down there or a wandering animal. And remember, I said animals live up top, so it can't be too far in, because if it was, then why would an animal ever go that far into the dark, right? So... Right now we've got we've used up those two things, and by the way, guys, just just so you know, I went and I went to Donjon earlier, and I took some trick, uh, some traps, some uh, omens, I think, and some uh, uh, wandering monsters or random encounters, and I made myself a D one hundred table. So we're gonna add uh, some some sparkle of stuff in here. I guess I should. Getting dice. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this to spice up the dungeon as we go. Uh, let me get a set of percentile dice. Okay. And, you know, again, I'm like anything, I'm going to roll this, and then if it doesn't work, or I'm, then I'm not going to use it, and also I'll just uh, I'll modify it as need be. Okay, so the other things, though, that we know we want to use right away, we got the damp area with the, with the plants, and then we've got the circle engraved with the undead. Okay, and then we have the, the well room that tells you information. I don't want to put that too close, the well room, because I feel like that's a powerful uh, area. So I want them to have to dig a bit for that. Already this space has a room, which would make sense for the undead, except it's kind of small. Um, so I don't know if, because um, there's got to be two per part. Well, it's a 20 foot room. Yeah, and this, so I'm going to put this, this is going to be area five. No, you know what? I'm, re I'm rethinking my logic here. I have to listen to myself, what I said earlier. What we want to do is we don't want, again, the dungeon to be so compact. This is not a five-room dungeon. They need to, this is sprawling, right? So we'll just leave that room empty for now. Let's, let's make our dungeon a bit bigger before we add those other items. So I'm actually going to shrink it down a bit. And so let's go... We can see this is starting off being very... Um, symmetrical and what I'm going to do again I want to create some areas where the party can't necessarily see what's happening so it's going to be one of those again remember we're this is a classic dungeon crawl so we want to create areas where the party has to like scout ahead they have to kind of think about what they're going to do we need them to really be you know kind of thinking about what's happening we also want to put in some I don't want to call them red herrings, but dead ends. And again, maybe those someday will open up into something. Um, yeah, as a matter of fact. Okay. So I'm going to make this area down here 2A. And I'm going to go back to 2A. And this is probably should be a general note, but I'm going to say all areas marked 2 B will have broken mirrors that some of the pieces will fit the mirror in room 2A, okay? So, so any area marked be, to be, and we'll make a mechanic for that. We'll say, um, let's see, the mirror is missing uh, 3d6, no, that's, that's too many, 
is missing three to eight. I, I, I like to keep things random. Let's say four, to, let's say five to eight. So that's a d4 plus four, right? Um, pieces. Okay. And then one in six chance that one to three pieces fit. There we go. So, and, you know, in best case scenario, they'll only need to find like two of these mirror areas, but more likely they'll need to find a few. Okay. That's probably getting hard to read. All right, so I'm going to put a mirror there. So as they're going up, they're going to find a mirror there. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? All right, see, I'm already working this out here. Because again, this needs to be some kind of riddly, riddly thing, right? So I'm going to make areas called 2C, which are going to have Here is to see uh, will have broken mirror no pieces fit. Okay, so this is going to be again they'll they'll be on a mission collecting pieces of mirror. They're going to have to find them from the right place. So th and this is kind of a strange area. Um, because there's going to be a lot of mirrors here, right? So this is like an e a mirror area. Again, I'm creating a section of the dungeon that is going to be... You know, actually, I like the idea that... I'm going to redraw this a bit. Okay. And again, when they first come through here, unless they're very lucky, they're not going to find that dead body. So that means that they're not going to know that it makes sense to take these mirror pieces at first. Right? So these, are, I'm just drawing, I'm just making for convenience of space. This is going to be a bunch of chambers with mirrors, and we can probably write something up. Actually, I'll put um, curtains in front of them. That makes it look like a secret door. <laughs> Drawing this way is difficult. There we go. There we go. That's more like curtains. Curtains. The players get so nervous by curtains, so I love to have them. Okay. Uh, all right, let's continue this guy out. So again, that's like an area with that. I'm going to make a, um, actually inspired by uh, Gygax's little labyrinth there, I'm going to make a little labyrinth area here. Remember too that if you're playing old school D&D, &D, that there is this idea of um, time management, right? And resource management. So if we create a situation where the players have to spend a lot of time in an area, they're going to be burning up torches and that kind of stuff, right? And of course, if you're going to have wandering monsters, that's also a factor. I'm not going to be uh, cruel. <laughs> And I'm actually, I'm doing what he did. I'm not going to be cruel. I'm not going to put a bunch of doors here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make this so that this area is um, basically archways. So when you come into here, you can go boop, 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 boop. 
I'll put a secret door here, right? Because this is basically your end spot. Um, so these are essentially archways. I want to make it so it's not too easy, right? And go like that, go like that, go like that, go like that. I don't want to make it impossible either. And we definitely want to have some dead ends and some circles. Yeah, this seems about right. So this whole area is going to be basically a labyrinth. And what we'll do in here is let's take one of our random rolls and let's put something in. 33. I'm going to scoot down to 33. Okay, so 33 is a pendulum trap. Oh, wow, okay. That's pretty terrible. Well, you know what that's going to be is right here because uh, right here because we'll assume that most people can't find the secret door, right? So if they happen to go through the secret door, then they're going to have to face this trap. Um, so this is actually going to be area five, I guess. All right, so let's. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove. If I've used it, I'll remove it. I'm not going to leave the damage part because I don't know. Um, hold on. Oh, nope. You know, do I like a pendulum trap? You know, I'm gonna just, I'm, yeah, I'll just for it. All right, that's not spelled right. You think I don't have spell pendulum? There you go, pendulum trap. Okay, we'll just leave that. That's easy. Uh, okay, and of course, there needs to be some kind of reward in that room. Pendulum trap is gonna be actually be five. I'll just go like this, I'll put a T here, so we know it's a trap. Okay, this is this whole area is area five. And so then the main room. Boy, it's hard to write on this thing. I'm gonna have to figure out a better way to do this. Unless you kind of like this. Let me know in the comments if you're like, even as clumsy as it seems. Okay, you know what? This might not be a bad place to put that pool. Because again, I don't want to make it... No, no, I'm not gonna do that. Let's put some kind of treasure in there. Um, it needs to be thematic though, right? So we've got a, basically a labyrinth, right? And then at the end, this is some kind of a treasure. So let's, uh, well, I can just, we're gonna talk about treasure in, in the next video, I think. I'll just put appropriate treasure so I don't have to take time to figure it out. Normally I might put the treasure in as I'm going, but again, I wanna stay focused for, for each of these videos. So, um, also I'm gonna get rid of this because that looks like a, like that, okay. That's good. The other thing I might do is if there is a room here that doesn't, yeah. Okay, because I don't wanna have too many mazes in this place. I'm gonna start there, okay? And then we're gonna come off. And again, I'm gonna go a really long straight corridor. And I think what I'm gonna do is, I had, I had noted that I put, uh, well, a falling portal is always good. Yeah, all right, so I'm gonna combine two things here. This is gonna be area six. And I'm going to take this idea, Statue of Maiden must place a fresh rose in her hand to open the secret door. Okay, and I'm going to put that here. 
but I'm also going to put this following uh, porkless as well. So that will be marked with a T and I'll put that and then she will be marked with a six, which is a statue. So do that and I'll say area six. Okay, and then of course there's a secret door that goes through. Oops. I've actually seen some uh, some people who do the secret doors like that, where they put it on the other side. So I might just do that. All right, secret door. Uh, that's going to go somewhere, which will, that's obviously some kind of a, uh, a passageway to another level. All right, so again, I'm making a, this is going to be, uh, okay. This is going to be stairs going down. Okay. And off this door, off the stairs, I'll put a, I'm going to put an intro, a, a, an archway, which is actually going to bring us to another, like a, like basically like a, a sub level. That they can explore. Okay, we'll do that in a second. Um, all right. Uh, okay. Strange circle and grow with, with the with the undead. So let's put the undead on the other side. Okay. We're going to come this way for that. And I think what I'm going to do is, again, using long corridors. <laughs> That's tricky to draw straight. Straight corridors. I want to make sure I'm on the screen so you guys can see. You can actually do like a drawing assistant for, for create, but if you do that, you can't draw lines of diagonal. Actually, maybe I'll turn it on. Done. There we go. Oh, nope, I don't want to do that. That should be better for my lines. There we go. Now you guys think that I'm like some master straight line drawer. <laughs> so this is going to be a corridor. series of corridors, I should say. Again, kind of maze-like. No, you know what this is going to be? The classic in d, &D this is going to be a reverse cigarette. Okay, this is a reverse cigarette. And anybody who's ever played in White Plume Mountain is probably going to be like, oh boy. Right? So that's that's our reverse cigarette, and then what we'll do is we'll put because you know what this was, right? This was a, a an arena, right? So this area was an arena. This is going to be seven. I wish we could turn that drawing guide on enough easier. Um, that's going to be number seven. That's going to be an arena. Can I draw number seven, or is it going to not? No, well, let me do it. Because you can't see when I did it. Okay, so I turn the drawing guide off. This is number seven. This is going to be number seven. Now, one thing that should be noted here is that the um, the arena itself, uh, the entrance is going to be here. Oop, oop. Goes down, right? So this is actually going to be a tricky way to get the players to 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 the second level, right? Because this at the at the bottom, I'm going to put a door, and that door will be somewhere on level two. You know, this, so this room number seven is actually a second level room. Okay, and this is going to be the arena with the undead. So, area seven. Okay, I'm just checking my time too. I want to. I don't want to make these too long. Um, so this is a uh, arena. Is 
ったのね。My husband has let you spell it wrong. It's a girl. Wrong. You got rot. Okay. Okay. Uh, actually, on level two. Okay, so it's probably very difficult for you guys to see this. Let me. All right, so we're down here. All right, so this is an arena type. A reverse cigarette like bottom is actually on level two, um, and this is where I'm going to put the uh, the undead fighting. Right. So. So I'm not. I'm gonna remove this range circle things. I don't need that. But I'm just gonna go like this. Copy that and put it here. I know. I made the room for level one, but it's a level two room now. Um, so the entire space feels cold. All sounds seem applied in the center of the room. Lie the skeletons, right? Uh, with treasure, uh, the skeletons will attack the party approaches. If destroyed in the room, will reanimate 24 hours. Uh, anyone left dead in the room will come back as zombie each new day party blah blah right so all that can be the same right and then of course door leading door leading I'll capitalize that leading to area something on level two look at that one way down to level two we've actually already got let me do this for you guys. There we go. Okay, so you can see now. Based on as uh, uh, we've drawn this, you can't see me anymore now. Um, we've already got two ways to get down to level two, right? We got number over, over number six over here, right? Right, area six right there. Okay, and then also area seven. This is already two ways down. Plus we've got the um, plus we've got the the mirror that could lead us wherever, right? So that's pretty good uh, so far, and this is going to be a decent amount of exploration. So let's actually continue this. Can I actually? I might leave this black screen up because that might actually be better for you guys. I don't know what's better to see. Let me like that. There I am. Okay. <laughs> oh, you can at least see me so you don't look on a black screen. Okay, so um, I'll switch back and forth to the other one as, as we as we as we need. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna look at this. We've got room seven as our reverse cigarette with the we're still gonna, still gonna keep the skeletons, right? Because even though it is the entrance to level two, it's not really level two. There can be other stuff in this room and we can play around with it. But for now I think we're good with that. Um but it did kind of script the map a little bit, so I want to come over here. The entrance is there, which means this path here does not go there, which means this could go any number of places. So I think we're going to have it go down this way. I think this will have two ways in. I took off my drawing guides again. So we're going to have two ways in here. And... What I'll probably do here is just, I'm just thinking of it now, so I'm not going to worry about it, is I'll probably put a, draw, put another layer above this one, and then I'll use the drawing guides and draw over this and get straighter lines for my final map. So for now, I'm just going to rough it out. Okay, so this is going to come down here. And because, again, we still have the damp area with the, uh, oh, we already did that with the, with the, there's one less, there we go. Okay, let's go over here. Let's go like this again so we can see. Um, we already did the strange circle thing, which we're getting rid of. Uh, we have the damp area partially collapsed with the vines. So that's pretty dangerous, right? So um, that might be a good thing to lead us up to the well room. Because again, this well room is going to be a pretty, pretty powerful tool once they figure out it's there. In fact, it's very powerful for level one, but I, I like it. 
So let's go back to our map. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the well room. Well, I'm going to put this area with the with the with the vines down here. The other thing that's important to note here is that because the, there's going to be lots of good ways to get around these things, but if they if the if it's so far in the dungeon, they have to consider they're going to be carrying stuff in, right? So putting something that requires like stuff, you know, to overcome it, like they might, I don't know what they would do, um, is they're going to have to lug all that stuff all the way into the dungeon to get it, you know, pretty far. Although this won't take that long, a couple turns. Okay, so I'm going to put that area with the vines. Um, damp area dungeon, wall seam cloud, vine grows and crack. That's going to be area eight right there. So let's go like this. Okay. So I'm already there, so area eight. Temporary dungeon, walls partially collapsed, strange vines grow. If anyone with light source approaches, the uh, vines will entangle, right? We already have that, so that's done. That's easy. And now we're going to go back to our map again. And actually, you know what I'm going to do here? I'm changing my mind, as usual. Once I get past that, I'm going to mark the area as a, like this, basically. Once I get past that area with the vines, um, they're they're now in kind of another section of the dungeon. This might be this might lead to the uh, to the humanoids instead, right? This might be another. This is a kind of an ideal space for the you know they don't want to cross it because they're they're afraid of the vines, right? Make sure this fits on the screen. Uh, yeah, they don't want to cross it because they're they're afraid of the vines, right? So this pathway might lead to the where the humanoids are which I think will end up being its own map. So I'll just put a note here. So again, I'm just going to leave that for now. So it continues. Uh, let's see. Humanoid layer. All right, so yeah, this this 8A tunnel to news to humanoid layer. And let's see. All right, so we still have that well. You know, I'm thinking to myself again cuz it's very powerful. I think we're going to put it on this area over here where the uh, that like half half layer area where the um this keyboard uh where the where they have to take the, the stairs up here. So I'm gonna kind of put it up here. And again, this is gonna break off into a couple different, yeah, you guys can see that, right? okay. A couple different options. And one important thing I think we wanna put in all dungeons is, um, something that stops the progress of the players, but does it, you know, at, for short periods. So like they can't just figure it out on the spot. They've got to prepare for it. So I think I'm going to put some kind of like a collapsed area as well. So we're going to, we're going to add that. So we got a couple things and I also have the, my labyrinth I need to add. So we've got a few things going on here. Uh, up here is where this room with the pool is going to be though. So I'm actually going to have two ways in to it, so they're both going to lead into the room. And I think what I'm going to do, this is kind of classic D&D, right, is I'm going to put, so this is a pretty big room. There's two ways in, and I'm going to do, oh, let me make this bigger. Yeah. There's two fingers moving it. Uh, there's two ways in, but they are not going to be. Um, and again, I'll write this in the description so we know what it is. But this is area nine. Okay. 
So this guy, and I'm gonna deal with this in a second, but oh, good use this keyboard. <laughs> Lots of stuff going in there. Uh, let's see, area nine. Okay, uh, this room has two one-way doors. Okay, that should be pretty obvious. Um, they are wizard locked by a 10th level wizard, right? Something like that. So, you know, if you're a high level party, we'll just walk right through it. But uh, I guess when they get to that high level, we'll deal with that. Um, and um, now the room itself has the well. And we already wrote about that, right? The uh, the harvest and blah, blah. But what we want to do here is we want to say, uh, so the area leading up to it, so actually I'm going to call this 9A. Again, so we can uh, that's, that's A, right? That's 9A. And then we're going to go 9B is we're going to have some like side passages and stuff over here. So let's see. I don't like how messy this is. So give me a second, guys. I know I said I was going to fix it after, but. Let's draw these a little bit nicer. So off of these, we're going to have some passageways. And again, everything doesn't have to be a door. So that'll just be a passageway leading off to another room. Because we haven't used much of our, uh, our D100 table. So I'm going to bust out some of that stuff over here. So this is going to be like another little kind of just series of rooms. And because of the way I'm setting it up, where they, there's the two-way doors, you know, they're going to want to explore uh, these areas. So let's do that. And then let's come over here. And again, we'll do the same thing. Let's remember, in a mega dungeon, especially this style, is about exploration. So we want to give them enough space to explore. We don't want it to be so that they just kind of walk down a corridor and everything they want is right there. You know, you've got to... So all I'm really doing is just creating a series of rooms here. And they're going to have... A, these are going to have similar themes depending on the uh, exact situation. Uh, that's actually just going to be a dead end. I don't want it to seem like I'm not. Okay, there we go. All right, so now let's do, so left corridor, 76. Ah, okay. Some dungeon graffiti. And it says, beneath the altar. Oh, you can't see that because I'm... Okay, so right beneath the altar, some dungeon graffiti. All right, so we'll cut that. And we're gonna make this 9B. And that's gonna be our theme for that area. But let's just see what 9C is. And we're gonna, de we're gonna develop our two areas. 29. The ghost of a male halfling adventurer haunts this place. He attacks anything uh, which approaches the fading inscription of his name on the wall. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. There we go. Okay, beneath the altar. Hmm. 
All right. Okay, so, right, those are our, so nine. So clearly we need to put an altar somewhere. So I'm gonna put the, the half line, which is nine C. Let's turn off the drawing guide again so I can, uh, in this room. Right, and the graffiti we're gonna put in this room right here. So we write B. All right, so that's nine B. And suppose I'm gonna write nine C. All right, so also this is. All right. The rest of the space will be basically be empty. Again, I'm gonna create a random uh, encounters thing. So even though the space is empty, uh, it, it won't always be. And what we're gonna have here is the, these are just interesting points, right? So in 9C, in order to make this work, he's writing his name on the wall, right? Um, so, uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I you guys can't see this. Okay, so it says, I'll make this bigger. Uh, ghost of a male halfling adventurer haunts his place. He attacks anything which approaches the fading inscription of his name on the wall. Okay, that's fine, right? So somewhere in this room is his name is inscribed on the wall. And of course, where is it going to be? Beneath the altar. No, right? Because then I'm setting the players up that they have to fight this guy. And I like to set things up so they can figure out a way around it, right? So what we're going to do is, why why is he doing that? Right, he wants something. Uh, done, you know, ghosts want something, right? So, number one, let's figure out where the altar is. So, let me go back to my map for a second. That's a little bit messy. So, he is over here in nine C, and there, there's a one room connecting, right? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw on this wall, oops, that's my eraser. On this wall, I'm gonna draw an altar, okay? And altar, an altar sits on the, uh, an altar sits, sits under it. An altar, yeah, sits upon a, uh, Diaz on Diaz on the Oh no it's not Diaz, it's Dias. Dias on the Oh I need to put a, a a compass in here, but it's gonna be the southeast southeast corner. Period. Oh, let's see. Beneath the altar. Okay, hold on. So how does it get beneath the altar? So ultimately what I'm working on here is I think the, the idea is that there's something, he's trapped in this room because there's something, he can't get to the thing that's beneath the altar. He's writing his name on the wall um, because he wants people to know who he is, right? So, um, okay, even though he's going to attack people because he's a ghost. Uh, can be read from a distance with a lantern. Written in. Well, let's have give them an opportunity to use like read languages or whatever. So I'm going to see he it's written in half line. So unless somebody's half line, I'm not going to know. I might change it to non half line. We'll figure out in a second. Um, Anyone who researches the the name will find he has family back in town. Okay. All right. So uh, he you know he wants them to bring something to them. 
um, the ghost is, here we go, the ghost is missing, his left hand, period, okay. All right, so now there's an altar, right? So now the deal with the altar is going to be that there's some kind of a, a trap underneath it, I guess. I lost my mouse. There we go. So the altar sits in the distance the corner. Um, a combined strength of, let's say, 22, right? So two strong average people can tilt the altar back. Comma, but if either person lets go, the altar will fall back in place, save or or lose right <laughs> uh, a hand. Now you see where this is going, right? So. It, assuming the party, assuming the two people that are tilted back don't let go, they're fine. Um, under the altar is treasure, which again we'll deal with next time, and a now and a skeletal hand, halfling size. Wearing a right. period. Okay, so um, if the PCs bring the ring back to his family, they will be rewarded somehow. treasure map. That's always a good reward, right? Otherwise, the ring is worth, let's say, a thousand gold pieces. Be tempting, right? Um, all right. So clearly, we see what happened here. The, the halfling was with somebody, tilted, but that's his family's ring, right? Um, a ring with an with an elaborate family crest. There we go. Okay, so wow, okay, we're, we're coming up on an hour here. All right, so let's just take a quick look at what we've got here. Um, we've got the basis of a pretty interesting story. So why the the under the alt beneath the altar is written? Maybe we need to quickly add something here. Um, in this room is a skeleton of a halfling, some treasure, missing is left hand. Okay. Now we've connected the whole thing. They can either just take the treasure and be gone, or they can do the other thing, right? So we've got a little mini quest within the quest. Uh, 9A, of course, is the cool thing about the, with the, with the well. Some of these other rooms are kind of more or less empty, right? And again, this is like a half level below the, the below the. Did I note that six was going down? Okay, no, I need to make a note there. Stairs go to level two, so we know that. Nor forget certain things, right? And seven, I already made that note. So we've got a few things going on here, and we used all of our things, right? Now, what we're gonna do now? This is actually pretty. This is there's a lot of days where. To, There are a lot of uh, sessions of play. Oh, what does that do? There's a lot of sessions of play here. Um, what we're going to do is there's two more areas I want to add next time, which is the the maze, which is going to be pre pretty small, but just kind of it's going to have magic, so it's going to be more complicated. And we're going to work out the the at least the beginning of the spider's lair. And I also want to I don't know if we'll do all this one. And we're also going to work out our wandering monster and our treasure finding system because we're going to need some kind of we're going to need to randomize that because with so few kind of monster layers here we need to put good treasures here that 
could have been replenished somehow. Because, of course, the problem is is that if this is a frequently uh, adventured area, right, then you would imagine if there's, like, you walk into this room and there's, like, a pile of gold, like, why wasn't it taken? So we need to find some treasures that are either hidden away or, more likely, I think my plan, like, my initial plan was for sure was to have a lot of the treasure be on adventurers, past adventurers that we find. So this, I'm going to have to figure out some kind of a, um, a method to that, for that to work out, um, and we'll go from there. You know, simple as that. There could also just be something just generally that grows in the dungeon that is worth gold, even if it's not gold itself, that they can be collecting mushrooms or whatever. So, you know, we'll uh, I'll figure it out. That'll be what we'll work on next time. Uh, so in any case, if you haven't already and you've lasted this long, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, let me comments below things you want to see. If things are weird or you think we should make a change somewhere, uh, go ahead and tell me. The, I'm, we're kind of I kind of want to build this together in a lot of ways. Uh, in any case, I appreciate you watching, and I will see you next time.